Yesterday, Sieroji spoke about Bhuba Bhaga Maga, the forerunner path, the path which precedes the noble path. And he, um, he forgot to say yesterday something that was very basic, that with regard to the path leading to Nibbana, there is a root path. So there is a junction and there are three kinds of paths that are described in the text, the Mula, Mula path, and the Puba Bhaga Maga, which is the forerunner path to the noble path, and the Arya Maga. So Mula Maga means root, root path. So Mula Maga is the understanding that when we do something bad, with a bad intention, it brings bad results. And if we do something good, it, it brings good results. And the good and bad that we experience in life is, is created by our own karma, our own actions. So this knowledge that if one does uh, impure, uh, harmful acts, those will bring bad results. On the other hand, if one does clean and wholesome actions, speech, and so on, then this will bring good results. This is very important knowledge to have for everyone. <clears throat> so just as there is both suitable food and unsuitable food. Food that is unsuitable for us, that we may be allergic to, if we eat it, then we get into trouble. We experience bad results. On the other hand, if we eat food that is suitable for us in a suitable way, in moderation, then we will get the good results, the benefits from eating that food. So too with actions, there are two kinds. Actions which are impure, bringing bad results, blameworthy, and actions which are clean, wholesome, bringing good results. And to understand like this about the types of actions, these two types and their results, is called the right view of kama as our own property, kama sakata samaditi. We all are inheritors of our actions, good or bad. So this is very important knowledge to have. So there are various factors that combine with the mind. For example, vitaka, aiming, and then right F, uh, I, there is there is this basic path that has to be there and if we have the basic understanding that of kama as our own property and we put that into action then we will do dana we will give things we will perform acts of generosity and we will keep sila so that our physical and be hurt be and verbal behavior is clean and we will also develop knowledge so this understanding is the basis for doing ponya that is purifying deeds so from the mula path this root path one can do work various types of work and Sayadoji will explain about this today In the text, there is samaditi, right view. And based on this, there are paths which branch out. So this junction where paths branch out is kama sakata samaditi, the right view of karma as our property. 
So it is the most important uh, um, because it is the root junction. It's the most important junction on the on the path. It's the central place where other paths meet. So from that uh, junction, this root junction, Kama Sakata Samaditi, the right view of karma. There's the path of jam, jhana samaditi. And then there's the path of vipassana samaditi. That's basically the path of vipassana. And then there's mega samaditi. That is the noble path. The arya path. And there's also pala samaditi. The right view of the fruits of the path. And there's also uh, Pachawakana Samaditi, but for now that is going to be left aside. So there are basically these three ty- three types of path on this path related to karma, kama, that branch off from this understanding of kama. And the f- the first is just doing the good deed of dana in an ordinary way, giving things, uh, keeping morality, and developing ordinary metta and karuna, the wish for others' welfare and compassion. And one performs one's, one's basic human responsibilities and one has basically a good mental attitude. So in this intention or chetana, chetana is the predominant thing, and therefore this right view of kama as one's own property, KSSD, kama sakta samadeti, is included. So this is the path of kama, and it includes dana, generosity to some extent, uh, sila, morality, and bhavana, also to some extent, mental development. And what one gains from this com- path of kama is birth as a human or as a deva, not more than that. Some live like that with the right view of of kama as their own property, as the basis for what they do. And therefore they um, they do many good deeds that lead to human and, and deva rebirth. They develop this type of kama and therefore they die. Uh, when they die, they get that result. They get the result of being born in the human or deva uh, worlds. So this is the path of, of karma, kama. And in the human world, mostly it's suffering. There's not that very much, uh, much pleasure because in life one gets old, one gets sick, at the end there is death, in between there is sorrow, lamentation, uh, people grieve, cry. So because people see that uh, life is so short, we have to suffer like this. So they think, some people think, well, a long life would be better because we don't come so quickly to death. So with that in mind, uh, people develop the worldly absorptions, the jhanas. And with these, um, because they develop this because they have heard, well, that if one develops the worldly absorptions, the worldly jhanas, then one can be reborn in the Brahma realms. And in the Brahma realms, people live a very, very long time. So having heard this, keeping basic morality, 
Uh, people develop the worldly jhanas, which suppress the obsessive kilesas, the pariyotana kilesas that arise in the mind. So when samadhi is good, then the nivaranas, the obstacles to concentration, don't stick to the mind. And the heat of the nivaranas is eliminated and therefore the mind becomes sharp. So when one develops these worldly jhanas and dies, the result is that one goes to one of the Brahma worlds, depending on the jhana that was developed. And in that world, that Brahma realm, one gets a very long lifetime. So the heat of the kilesas is um, the heat of the kilesas is suppressed, it's removed by samadhi and jhana. And therefore the beings in the Brahma worlds have a very long life. In, in uh, the effect of removing heat, the effect of heat can be seen uh, and what happens when we keep things outside of the refrigerator. Some things, some foods, that when we keep them outside of the refrigerator, then they last a day, or maybe two days, or three days, and in a short time they rot. But if you put these foods in the refrigerator, then the refrigerator contains a cooling element and this cooling element keeps the food from rotting. So instead of just lasting a day or two days, things can last a week or two weeks or more. So because the cold enters into the food, the quality of the cold can keep the, um, the, care, the qualities that would rot. So in the Brahma worlds, the heat of the Nivaranas is removed. And with that, with that Chaitana that one gets from developing the worldly jhanas, one is born in that world. So This is the result of having right view about the jhanas, the absorption, jhana jhana samaditi. And that is, if one develops the jhanas and then goes, uh, based on that chedana, one goes to the Brahma world, is reborn there, and that is the result that one gets from from performing the, the worldly absorptions. The right view of kama as our own property, this is like the big junction, the main junction. And from there, uh, one does various types of good deeds, like generosity, dana, sila, morality, and others. And due to the intention, the chedana, of our actions, we get a human and a deva birth. So from here, one develops the jhanas, and then one goes to the Brahma worlds and gains a long life there. So this, into, this too, life in the Brahma worlds, involves having a life. And after life, one can die, one dies, and on dying, one can go down, fall out of the Brahma worlds, and one can even fall down quite far after that. So one has to search for a path which brings happiness in this life, and that is the path of Vipassana, to observe mind and body as they arise related to cause and effect. So as we do this, 
the right view of Vipassana, Vipassana Samaditi arises. No one can deny that these are cause and effect happening. Both the observation and the object itself are, are results. And so both of these object, the object observed and the observation are related as cause and effect. We have an eye and therefore seeing can happen when the object strikes it. We have an ear because of the ear hearing can arise. Because of having a nose, smelling can arise. Because of having a mouth, having a tongue, then tasting can arise. Because of the body, too, when tangible objects strike it, we can experience them. We know the touch. And also, when mental objects strike the mind base, then one knows these. So various types of consciousness arise when the object strikes the sense base. So this is how the physical uh, is the cause for mentality knowing to arise. And there's also knowing in the mentality can be the cause for physicality to arise. Matter can be the cause for matter to rise. Mind can be the cause for mind to arise. There's nothing that happens without a cause. And seeing how these, um, this mind and matter that is related as cause and effect arise and then pass away is Vipassana knowledge. Because one practices, one sees this for oneself and gains the right view of Vipassana, Vipassana Samaditi. And the yogis who are practicing now, they are on this path of Vipassana. So this path cuts off the, the, the very roots of the kilesas in every moment of observation. And when the factors are all complete, then the path, path knowledge arises, and this cuts off the kilesas, roots and all. And then there is fruition knowledge, and both path knowledge and fruition knowledge, these both see Nibbana. To reach this, one has to follow the path of Vipassana. And yogis are now following straight along this path. The remaining three types of right view, Mega Samadeti, Pala Samadeti, and Petravikana Samadeti, which reflects on the special things that have arisen in one. There is no need to develop these three types of right view deliberately. If the right view of Vipassana, Vipassana Samaditi, is complete, then these will automatically arise as the result. When Vipassana knowledge is complete, then one goes from observing Pavata, the endless stream of mental and physical phenomena, to Apavata, that which does not arise and pass away. Path knowledge and fruition knowledge both observe this apavata, that which does not arise and pass away. They take it as their their object. And following path and fruition, then reflective knowledge, pajavakana samaditi, reflects on what has just happened. So, based on the understanding of kama as our own property, kama sakata samadeti, one knows that 
This is the knowledge that bad bad deeds bring bad results and good de- good deeds bring good results. And with this knowledge, doing as now, to observe at every arising, always guard the mind with vigilant mindfulness. Starting with the rising and the falling of the abdomen, one observes every arising object with ardent effort and aiming. Vipassana knowledge is sure to arise. And once it has arisen, it is sure to develop stage by stage. When complete, when the Vipassana knowledge is complete, the remaining types of right view, samaditi, will automatically arise. The work to be done is to develop Vipassana samaditi, the right view of Vipassana. Yogis have to try to develop this. And in doing this, the three types of virya are very important. Three types of effort. The initial effort to start the practice and then the boosted up effort that is needed to overcome laziness. And third, the increasing effort that increases stage by stage until one reaches the goal. If these three types of effort are complete, then Vipassana knowledge will become complete. And if Vipassana knowledge is complete, then the remaining three types of right view will automatically result. So although we call it Vipassana Samadeti, in fact, it is the forerunner path, Pubha Bhaga Maga. That is, to, um, in this observation of mind and matter, which are related as cause and effect, seeing how they arise and pass away, it is not just Vipassana knowledge. As Sayadoji said, the path factors of samadhi are also present. Samadhi meganga. And also the path factors of the wisdom portion of the path are also present. And there is sila as intention, chetana sila, and also as restraint of the sense faculties, indriya samvara sila. So the three groups of the path, sila, samadhi, and panya, are all complete. One is developing this forerunner path, the puba bhaga maga. And Siraji said, these are the three types of the path. The mula, mula path, the Puba Bhaga Mega path and the noble path. And when one practices to a satisfactory level, as Sayadaji said yesterday, Yesang Tesang Hi Bekave Sataro Satipatana Arada. When one observes every arising object, and in doing so develops the three kinds of effort. When these three kinds of effort become complete, then Vipassana knowledge also becomes complete. And this is what is meant by the word arada, when the four types of satipatthana are completely developed. This is development not due to reading discussing, asking questions, and so on. It is due to practice. It's due to effort. And because of this, it is said, Arado tesan aryo atangiko mago samadukakiyagami. Because of developing the four kinds of satipatthana to completion, the great path with eight parts, the great path of Vipassana is opened. 
So the sila, sila, samadhi, and panya, all these parts of the path have their own capabilities, their own powers. Sila, morality, is what keeps her physical and verbal behavior clean and pure. This is Arya. Our behavior becomes elevated by Sila. When Virya, Sati, and Samadhi are good, then the mind becomes clean. And this too is Arya. The, the obsessive kilesas are suppressed at this moment. And when Panya arises, then the latent kilesas are uprooted in a momentary way. So the gross, medium, and refined mental defilements are all being eliminated by this forerunner path or the trainings of sila, samadhi, and panya. So the mind has become clean. The mind becomes clean through these three trainings, and therefore it is also called uttama, excellent, unsurpassed. This is a quality that one gains every second of the time when one observes and develops knowledge. So those who are really practicing. I'm not sure what Sayadoji said. Those who, are, those who are really practicing understanding this, they understand that they are just very few among many with this type of realization. So one is systematically practicing, and with this systematic practice, one reaches the end of the cycles of suffering. The forerunner path, Puba Bhaga Maga, becomes complete. If one doesn't know about the practice of Satipatthana Bhavana, as the yogis do now, if one doesn't know the method, if one doesn't, if one knows about it, but one doesn't um, observe developing the three kinds of virya. For such a person, their physical and verbal behavior, their mental behavior, and their knowledge won't develop. Nothing will happen. And because of no development of physical and verbal behavior, sometimes one will transgress. Sometimes uh, the desire to transgress will arise in the mind, and if that becomes extreme, then one can commit transgressions. But when one practices and develops the three kinds of effort, then Vipassana knowledge becomes complete. As one observes, then the kilesas die down. Each time one observes, they're dying down. There's virya, sati, and samadhi, the, the factors of the concentration part of the path. And there's knowledge, the factors of the path, the wisdom part of the path. So if one doesn't observe, will with the practice of satipatthana, will one's physical, verbal, and mental behavior become clean? And if they don't, if, if our behavior is not clean, will it be uplifted? So now, uh, those who practice and develop the four, um, for those who do not practice, develop the four foundations of mindfulness, whether they are monks or lay people, whether they are young or old, no matter who it is, if these four, uh, if the practice of satipatthana is not developed, then one, 
one won't become clean, won't de- one won't develop this purity. But on the other hand, if the practice of satipatthana is developed, whoever develops it to completion, no matter what their views are, no matter what their religion is, such a person will become pure and clean. So at this time, of the time of the practice, both the quality of ignorance is being removed, both not knowing and knowing in the wrong way. Ignorance is not there, and therefore there's no craving for good objects. There's no craving of tana. This is also eliminated. Without any craving, there will be no clinging, this demanding for an object that one feels one must have, upadana. And there will be no view, wrong view of self during the practice. So the kilesas are eliminated in the moment of observation, and these are the cause for suffering. As one, they have no chance to arise, the kilesas, and therefore they are being eliminated, kaya. So this, this, the kilesas which cause suffering are eliminated, and that is what this word kaya means in Pali. The physical, verbal, and mental behavior is clean. So when we um, committing actions uh, without practice, one commits both clean and unclean actions. For the most part, unclean. And this is called the, the suffering of the cycle of kama or the cycle of actions. Because of the actions, also there will be results. But because one is observing the object, there is knowledge arising, and so there is no ignorance, and the mind is clean. So no, um, because of observing the object, one is not committing any type of deed that will create a future life. These, the kama that creates results is not, creates the, the results in new lifetimes is not being committed. There's no wholesome, wholesome action that is committed that will result in life. And there's no unwholesomeness because there's no kilesas as one observes the object. So because there are no kilesas, there are no kama, there's no kama that results from the kilesas, and there are no results due to the kama. All these three are coming to an end. There's no, uh, there's no primary results nor no secondary results. So therefore, there is no suffering of results arising. So all these three cycles, the cycle of kilesas, the cycle of kama, and the cycle of results, there is no, uh, these cycles are cut off and there is no suffering of these cycles. So this is why the path is called Sama Dukakya Gami. This is, this phrase shows the quality of the path. It is not wrong, it is correct, Sama. One reaches the end of the kilesas, Dukakya, moment by moment, every time one observes. So when one knows the virtues of the forerunner path, the Puba Bhaga Mega, one will be very satisfied. If one really wants to get happiness, those who follow the path of Satipatthana 
or the path of Vipassana, have to try to fulfill the parts of the path. The sila portion of the path, the samadhi concentration portion of the path, and the panya wisdom portion of the path. There are eight parts and one should try to fulfill these. If they are fulfilled and one walks straight along the path, then it becomes Arya, it is noble and pure. It is high level, excellent, and that means that it dispels what is base and low. It dispels the suffering of all kinds, gross, medium, and refined. The three cycles of kilesas, kama, and results revolve every second of the time. But in the, because one practices and develops the forerunner path, one replaces the revolving of these three cycles with the forerunner path, Puba Bhaga Maga. The yogis who are practicing respectfully understand quite well about this. They understand that the cycle of kilesas does not revolve during the practice. And the cycle of kama also, because there are no kilesas, there is no kama. This cycle does not revolve. And there are no results coming because the cycle of kama has stopped. So these three cycles have come to an end. CROG tomorrow will talk about how, how the cycles revolve and how they are cut off. Today, what he has explained is the qualities of the path, sama dukkha kiyagami, that it, and also arya. The path is pure, arya and it leads correctly to the end of suffering. 